this video, let's go through the presets, how you navigate them and how you can use them. So up over here is where you can navigate your presets folders. It's divided into different subcategories over here. The first being sort of your different versions of Amplitude. So Amplitude 5 are presets that are created just using Amplitude 5. Then there's presets for Amplitude 5 CS, Amplitude 5 Max, the collections, the custom shop, some legacy presets, the default patch, which is this patch over here, and then any presets under this are user presets that you've created yourself. Let's take a listen to some of these. Now, what I really like about loading up a preset is taking a look at the signal chain and sort of just deciding on why specific components were used and you can sort of reverse engineer the sound and use those ideas when you start creating your own tones. Now, I'm just gonna jump for some that I really like. So under Amplitude 5 here, I'm going to go for Space Solo. So a very nice lead tone. If you take a look at this patch, it's using the Amplitude 50 amp head, which is a high gain amp. It's using the lead channel. It's dialed in some settings over here. This is passing through into the 4x12 Brit 8000, so a Marshall style speaker cabinet. You can see what room it's using over here. So it's using the large studio. Then what we're doing is we're going into the mixer, and then after the mixer, we're going into some rack effects, which are your sort of more high-end studio processes. And this uses the inverse reverb and then a shimmer reverb. I'm just gonna turn off the shimmer so you can hear what the inverse reverb sounds like. If I increase the mix, just creating that sort of tight reverb sound or room sound, should I rather say. And then if we add in this shimmer and turn off the inverse, it's just got that beautiful shimmer effect, which adds a sort of modulation into it and decaying the sound. And with the two together, So that's a really nice spacey solo. The preset name is very handy. So I'd say definitely look through some of these and look for some of the interesting names because you actually find some gems over here. I'm gonna go for Amplitude 5 and then I'm going to go down to the Purple Floyd. And if you can sort of imagine from the name, it's probably gonna sound like Pink Floyd. So sort of your ambient -y clean tone. <laughs> So let's take a look at the signal chain. Starting off, we've got the amplitude 50 gain. So also a nice lead tone amp with the lead channel that's being used going again into the 4x12 Brit 8000 and as well going into some rack of studio processors. So this is going into a digital delay and then into a whole reverb. So if I just play with a digital delay, you can hear those echoes as I start playback. And then just turning that off, going into the hall. If I increase this mix, you'll really get that hall tonality. As with any of these effects, a little really goes a long way. So I'm going to turn back that mix and turn back on the digital delay. So the key thing I just want to show you that you can take away from some of these presets is using the same app, but when you get to the mastering effects afterwards, these mastering rack processes can really change up the sound quite a bit. First you heard we're using two different reverbs, and now here you're using a different reverb and a digital delay. So if you're going for some of those lead tones, think about incorporating some delays and reverbs into your signal chain for your tone. Now how about going on to one of the other folders? I'm going to go for the Amplitude 5 CS, 
and I'm going to go for the Buckley, which from the name, you're probably going to guess that it's giving you sort of Jeff Buckley tone. I'm going to switch to my neck pickup in a single tone. So for this clean tone, what we've got here is a Fender style amp with a slight bit of spring reverb. This is going into a digital reverb, giving you some extra room sound to the tone, then going into its sort of matched cab with SM57s marked on both these 2x12s at the top over here. And that's really all it is for this tone. So you can actually have quite a simple signal chain depending on what sound you're going for. If I go to this digital reverb, bypass it, and take a listen. Really adds quite a bit to the sound. So even though I am still using a slight bit of reverb on the actual amp, it's nice to add a different type of reverb, this being a digital reverb with the spring reverb coloring the tone. Now, how about jumping to some of the amplitude max? So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to check out five max and let's go for the double funk. So from the sounds of it, this is going to give us a funk tone. <laughs> Switching over to my bridge pickup. Very, very, very different sound. So with this, if you take a look, we've got a signal chain that is quite complex here. It's got a chain over here and then it's incorporating the DI into the tone as well. We're starting off with a compressor. The compressor goes into an EQ where we've shelved off some of the lower frequencies. This goes to the DR where it splits. Now I'm gonna come back to the DR. What I'm gonna do is actually just turn off that DR. If I click that again, it's going to enable it again. But now if I just take a listen here without the DR. And then we go into a Fender style amp, which is a 59 Bassman LTD with a bit of presence boosted up there. The mids cut down, bass boosted and treble cut. This goes into a match cab, which is the 4x10 on this combo amp. And then again, it goes to some master effects. We've got this pitch shifter, which is slightly shifting the pitch. And then into this L2A compressor, just squashing the dynamics a bit on that. So what I want to listen to is this pitch shifter. Adding in the pitch shifter. So that's adding a bit of detuning and some stereo spread. So if I increase that pitch level and turn off that spread and click on it again, you're hearing that spread over there. Now I wanna hear the DR signal. So I'm gonna enable the DR and what I wanna do is go to the mixer and just solo the DR. First of what you got here is a Neutron 3, which is an emulation of the Neutron Auto Wow Filter effect. So this is like a filter effect that's sweeping across, being triggered by a filter over here. And then this goes into, let's just go back here. I'm just going to get out of that. So if I click here and then back here, I can go to this and I view that as compressor. So that's just the raw DR signal. And what we're doing is we adding that together with an amp signal. So as you can see, you can get quite complex with a simple clean chain. So we've got the chain of effects of here before it hits the amp, the DR signal splits, there's some effects here, and then there's some master effects after that. Now about some other effects in the max over here. So I wanna go for some heavier tones. How about this Jerry and Chains? So this is gonna be a replica of Jerry Cantrell from Alison Chain's guitar tone. So 
So what we're seeing over here is we've got two different amplifiers, two different cabs with some effects before and some effects afterwards. So starting off, we've got a tube screamer style effect, which is tightening the tone and adding a bit of drive. Going into gates to remove any of that noise. If I just take that off, you can hear there's some noise. I've got that gate that's removing any noise. Then it goes into your Marshall style amp, which is the Brit 8000, into its matched cab with these types of microphones in this room. Then we've got a diesel VH4 style amp. So this is a German boutique amp that's quite a high gain with a sort of different tone to a Marshall. This goes into the 4x12 Metal T1, which is a Mesa style 4x12 cabinet. And then this comes back here into the mixer with some master effects. First being a vintage EQ1A, which is a Paltec style EQ. Then it goes into, let's see what this is over here. This is a phalanger double effect, giving a sort of doubled guitar tone. And if I click over here, and then over here, we're going into a room reverb, then a stereo enhancer. So we're enhancing that stereo image, and then finally finishing off with a compressor. So if I had to bypass all those master effects, so we've got the overdrive going into the amps. And then with the master effects. You get an idea of what those effects are doing. It's giving that more room tone to it, spreading the sound, and just adding some EQing and just compressing that signal so it's a lot tighter. Another thing regarding tightness is if we just go back to the beginning over here, a great trick with metal amps is to take an overdrive, add an overdrive just to tighten the tone. So if we listen without the overdrive, take a listen to that low end. Now if I add in the compressor, it's heightening it up way more. And then going to the master effects and adding those in really just tips that tone over the edge. And finally, let's look at one more tone. I'm gonna stay in the max category and let's go for the ED90. Now this is going to be an emulation of Eddie Van Halen's tone. Now we've got a really complex tone here where we're using three amps. We've got three different signals here. In the middle, we look here, we've got an EQ passing through channel one, just boosting the sort of lower mids, going into a Seldano SLO 100, which is an American style high gain amp. Then this goes into the 4x12 Metal TR, which is like I said, your Mesa cab. Then for the second chain, it's also the Seldana amp. We just take a look, there's some slight tweaks with the parameters. Channel one over here with a bit more overdrive, this with a bit less overdrive, with some tweaks to some of the other parameters. On the one side, we've got a flanger. So if we go here, on the one chain here, we got a chorus effect. This is emulating the Roland bass CE1. Also going into a delay. In the third chain, is just going into a delay. So these things are just going to create a bit more spread from the left and right. This passes into the same types of cabs. So we've got this cab here, this cab over here using different microphones, and this cab over here. So two and three pretty much have the same marks with just a slight change in difference with positioning, where cab one has got an SM57 over there. And then after that, we're going into a stereo imager, to a Pultec EQ, adding some whole reverb, and then a compressor. So it sounds pretty complex, but when you just pass through the signal chain and take a look at everything, you can actually narrow things down quite a bit. Now, another thing to point out is when you tweak some of the parameters on the preset, you can see you get this little asterisk in the top left showing you that there has been a change to this preset. What you could do is maybe if you make some changes, maybe you want to save it as your own preset. You can click over here, and give the preset a new name. Maybe I want to say ED90 Gary Edited, 
And then I could even go in and change some of the tags and descriptions over here. And what's really nice about some of these tags and descriptions is these things help you to find a tone that you're looking for in the presets. So for example, if I click this folder over here, it brings up the preset browser and I've got my tags here. So let's say for example, I'm looking for a tone that's got a crunch tone. And then with that crunch tone, I want the genre to be rock. Then for the instrument type, it's electric guitar. And then for the instrument type, let's say it's a solid body electric. And I can even choose the pickup position. So maybe I want a neck pickup. Then I get these presets over here. So let's maybe try out heaven door clean. So I've got my neck pickup selected. This is a clean chain. As you can see, it's got quite a signal chain of effects. It's a martial tone by just having a quick look over here with some EQ, some overdrive, some delay. This is a 4x12 cab, and then into some Rack Studio effects. So that's the really nice thing about this preset browser. You can use this to sort of narrow down a preset or sound that you're looking for, and then go through some of the results and see if it matches up for what you're looking for, for the tone that you need. So that's how to use the presets, how to browse the presets folder, and also how to backwards engineer some of these presets and the tones that you like and apply them to your own tones that you create.